Looking for a serious challenge after deciding Breck's lift service terrain isn't cutting it? Look no further than the lake chutes, a series of extreme rated lines at the very top of the mountain that are not for the faint of heart. Getting to this area requires a 5-10 to 10 minute hike from the top of Imperial, and these lines are all flavors of difficult, from simple steeps to some that require navigating cornices and rocks, to others that require perfect precision to get down in one piece. Oh, and to make matters even more difficult, they all begin at almost 13,000 feet, meaning that you'll be working through a grueling altitude that's sure to sap any remaining energy you have after the hike. We had the opportunity to check these shoots out for ourselves, and in this video, we'll give you a tour of what you can expect from this daunting area, in order from hard to really hard. If you find this information helpful, be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you haven't already, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, where you can follow along for exclusive, real-time takes on the mountains we visit. Enjoy! So here at the lake shoots today, this is a pretty prime day for hiking. It's about 40 degrees. Uh, the snow is in pretty good shape. So this is probably one of the easier runs you can take down. This over here is Nine Lives. If you go to the left, that one is Easy Street. We have this cornice over here. It is optional. You don't have to take it. But once you get into this bowl area, you have this nice wide open bowl. Then you have some rocks down there you can kind of navigate through. Um, and that's about that. So. Let's drop in and see how it is. Woo! Very steep cornice, very, very steep, but the snow is in good shape today. Um, so we had a nice little landing right there. So going down a couple turns. The snow is a bit crusty, but in good shape. And now we get some of these rocks. So there's a little bit of an easier way to go down over there, but you can also, this is probably a little difficult, but still doable. So we'll hop down kind of through here. Woo! And then we do a little bit of a hop turn and go this way. Much, much easier ways to go down if you hop through here. The nice thing about these nine lives and easy street runs is you can hop right back to Imperial. No need to traverse over there. Go back down to the sixth chair. So yeah, it's a few, you can see over there, someone is going down uh, a much easier entry down the easy street route. So that, is Easy Street, the one we just did is Nine Lives. They are good places to start if it's your first time on the lake shoots. This is Zoot Shoot on the lake shoots. As you get further away from the lift, the drop-ins get steeper, and this one is no joke. The insane wind and almost complete lack of visibility on the day of this recording just add to the perilousness. We took it relatively gently on one of the less steep drop-ins due to the short line of sight. Once past the drop-in though, you almost end up below the wind. And while the trail is still incredibly steep, it's a lot more like a typical expert run from here. On a day like today, the wind-blown snow from above has an almost magical effect on the snow quality of the rest of this run. This line was home to some of the best quality powder of the entire day, with light, effortless turns all the way through to the bottom. It takes a scary drop in to get here, but by golly, are you rewarded. Now when you get to the lake shoots lines out here, it's not quite as easy to stay in the high alpine. This run out goes back to the sixth chair, and it takes some flat catwalking and two lift rides to get back to the Imperial hike. There is sometimes a shortcut to get back to Imperial if you know where to turn, but if it's been a low snow year, this cut isn't always skiable. But after the draining, high elevation hike and demanding slopes of this area, the more mellow terrain can provide a very welcome break. Now here's when things start to get really extreme. This one is called Vertical Cornice, and it's pretty self-explanatory. 
and to be fully honest, this drop in right here is a little too gnarly for today due to the snow conditions, so we decided to go for a slightly easier but still incredibly high consequence entry. Once you drop in, things remain tough. There's really only one clear path down without running into rocks, and it involves a quick turn on incredibly steep terrain that has to be executed perfectly to avoid falling all the way to the bottom. But once you get past the rock band, things mellow out fairly substantially. There are a couple of options to get to the bottom, although snow quality across this area isn't quite as outstanding as that of the zoot shoot mentioned earlier. However, once you get towards the bottom, you can still hit some of that high quality windblown powder. Like with zoot, this line feeds you back down to the six chair. You can take both chair six and the imperial lift to get back to the hike, or you can spend more time in lower mountain areas to get relief from these lines. So we are here at the very end of the lake chutes. This is the chute to end all chutes. Very steep drop in, lots of rocks, and an unclear end. So let's take it, let's be very careful. Let's check it out. Woo. Okay, snow is soft, that's good. Oh. But this is no fall zone. If you mess up here, you're crashing into those rocks. Oh, this is definitely a little bit crustier than the rest of the chutes. But also, much steeper. You can just see that snow falling. So we're at the bottom now. Looks like we have a couple of options. So honestly, I think if you go that way, you can kind of make your way out. There's another uh, way to get out this way. Let's see, is this doable? Oh yeah, just gotta be a little careful here. And just execute that turn and avoid the rocks. Then do a little bit of a hop, avoid this rock too. Then you are golden. Woo. Woo. Oh man, that was probably the toughest of all of them. So that was a tour of the Breckenridge Lake Chutes. Wow, not an easy area. And while some of the lines are more reminiscent of typical expert pitches, the hardest paths down are up there with the hardest inbounds terrain in North America. And with the incredible altitude and required hike, it just turns the difficulty level up a notch. Looking for the ultimate test of both your endurance and technical proficiency? Try to lap all these lines in one day. You'll be absolutely exhausted but you'll be a better person for it. For more information on Breckenridge and over 80 North American ski resort destinations, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.